this is different from any other sound setup that you can get for a Terrier. Hi there everyone, I hope I find you well. It's really great to see you. Welcome back to the channel up here in the loft on Weir Yard with me, Jenny Kirk. Now today we're going to be reviewing a sound decoder and the sound profile that's on there. And this comes via Tram Fabrique and uh, they've loaned me one of their Dula and Haas sound decoders. Now it's not a brand that I'm personally all that familiar with, although I do believe that they are quite big over on the continent. Over here in the UK, we're more used to other brands, but certainly Tram Fabrique stock a full range of these decoders, and uh, they thought it might be a really great opportunity for me to test this out. It's all set up to go in a Daypole O-Gage Terrier. So I'm really looking forward to put this through its paces. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, and with additional support from Billy's Replacement Speakers. Check out our full range of merch in the merch box down below that include those all new great Billy's Replacement Speakers t-shirts, hoodies, die cut stickers, mugs, and a whole host of other items as well. But without further ado, let's take a look at this Doula and Haas 21 pin sound setup from Tram Fabrique, all ready to go for a Daypol O Gauge Terrier. <laughs> This is the packaging as it comes from Trainomatic. So we've got the actual sound decoder there, 21 pin. Uh, it just comes in a simple bag. And uh, then we've also got the speaker pre-fitted in a sound resonation box. And it's really just left to us to solder these into the locomotive. With a 21 pin decoder, you have to do that. The wires for the speaker don't come directly from the decoder. They actually go through the 21 pin interface. Um, so what we're going to do is just put that to one side and it should be noted as well. They do come very well packaged. There is a very strong cardboard outer box that um, Tramfabrique use, which does fit through your letterbox. So you don't have to be in for when the deliveries come, which is another good thing if you're going to be out at work. Now, we've also got some additional paperwork here with it. So we've got a list of the F numbers, the function numbers. These are all set up for the Daypol O-Gage Terrier. This particular sound setup is uh, from Tramfabrique and is based on some of their own recordings. So it's quite interesting to see when we read here the Tramfabrique sound experience. It says, uh, when you have come to a stop, you might want to clean the foot plate, which is F15, which surprisingly enough is a real recording I made during my travels and a vintage railways. One can only be so lucky to catch that moment. So this is different from any other sound setup that you can get for a Terrier. And certainly if you've got a fleet of Terriers, uh, because all these locomotives did have their own unique quirks, it's always great to be able to have access to one or two different sound setups. And as Tramfabrique say in here, that you know some locomotives are different to others. So when you play the sound file, you might want to um, have certain sounds more prominent than others to kind of tailor it into that individuality of the terriers. We've also got another duplicate of the um, function lists on there as well, just in case this goes missing. So um, that's all pretty good. We've got all the information that we do need. And there is access to the full Doula and Haas uh, manual, which can be downloaded from here. And that is available in English as well as German. But hopefully we're not going to need that. I have actually found that for most functionality, I've never really needed to look at the manuals with decoders. Now to get into the Daypole O-Gage Terrier, we're going to need to unscrew the body. Here is the example, which I'm going to be test fitting with this speaker and decoder setup. And um, I really just picked this one because it was just there on the shelf. And I've got my trusty jeweler screwdriver set. So we're going to very quickly delve in and just uh, remove the decoder. 
that is already in this model. So let's just see if we can remember how to get into the Daypole Terrier. Again, just really careful you don't lose any of these. It always pays to have a slightly magnetic screwdriver just for picking up these screws. There we go. So it's just those four screws to undo. And just be really, really careful because you'll see there that we've already got um, two sets of wires there and they're going for the firebox flicker and we don't want to be stressing those. Now, it's already got in this a um, Trainomatic 21 pin decoder. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that out. We can use that in another locomotive. Um, so it's, it's a zero waste upgrade. You always make good use of these decoders and just carefully ease it from both sides. Gentle rocking and that decoder is free. We're going to just put that out of the way. And then before we get going here, we need to put in the speaker. So just being a little bit careful to avoid uh, straining any of the wires. And what we can see, if I just take my little screwdriver here, is that these last two terminals, these are where we solder the speaker wires to. And in fact, that is exactly as per the highlighting here. You can see there the two wires for the speaker coming in to those last two terminals. And uh, just trust me, it's really easy on the soldering front. I'm going to be using a very small amount of flux just to make sure that we get a good, strong bond. And then if we need it, just got a little bit of extra solder. Probably not going to need much at all, really just to tin the wires because those solder pads are already uh, tinned. So it's really just a case of, I think, first up, um, just to make sure I'm going to tin these wires. So that's quite easy to do. Now, I've moved the decoder out of the way. In fact, everything that isn't needed is off my workbench um, because it's always a good idea to try and minimise the amount of um, stuff that can get in the way and uh, cause you issues. Now, with these wires, I'm just going to dip them into the flux. Um, it's probably the easiest way of doing it. I always get in the habit of putting the lid back on the flux just so that there's um, no real risk of uh, accidentally knocking it over. And believe me, you don't want to coat your workbench and floor and everything else with flux. So um, I'm just going to uh, take a little piece of solder. Just going to very carefully tin those ends. Really easy to do. So we're done now with the solder. Let's move that out of the way. Put the soldering iron there just so we don't get uh, any problems with it. And I'm just going to uh, quickly clean the tip of the soldering iron, ready for the next stage. So what I want to do now is first of all, I think before we get too carried away, what we're looking for is there is a space inside the boiler barrel. I can get my finger right down in there. And this is where Tramfabrique recommend that we just chuck this in, and forget about it. Um, it will do its job. It doesn't need to be stuck down. So what I'm going to do though first is I'm going to just make sure that we get it nicely soldered in place. So you may see my head come into shot. That's just so I can see what I'm doing better. We don't want excess heat being applied to this board for a long length of time. So and that's all it takes. Dab, done. Don't leave the soldering iron there any longer than you have to. Dab, done. What I need to do now is just double check Yes and yes, you don't need to pull them until they fall apart. It's just simply a case of uh, making sure that uh, you've got a good contact. Now I'm going to just feed those wires in just for now. 
and let's just retrieve that dealer and Hass decoder and of course just like any other 21 pin decoder it's uh, really easy to just bring this out and then we need to look for the aligning pin and we're going to make sure that we align that properly if it isn't going on then it's basically you've got it the wrong way around don't force these just gently push it down until all is well that's now in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the top back on I'm not going to screw it in just yet but I'm going to move this over to the programming track and what I always find um, just a really good practice just to make sure that all is well on the programming track so no damage can occur to your decoder I just read the decoder number and you should hear the motor uh, twitching as it reads that number and we should get from a new decoder number three if you don't get that then before you run the risk of blowing a decoder by putting this on a full power track you can go back in and just make sure that you haven't got any issues and that means that everything is okay and we're safe to secure the top and put this locomotive onto the main track. So I've got the locomotive now set up on the track and you can see my microphone. I've moved it into shot um, just so it picks up the locomotive. So I may sound just a little bit further away. Now at the moment I don't have a working O-gauge layout available to me and I don't have access to an O-gauge rolling road. So you may see my hand come into shot just to uh, stop the locomotive from disappearing off the end of the track just so we can get it up to speed so um, let's just check that the sound file is uh, up and running and that's the short whistle the long whistle and uh, if we turn the sound uh, fully on it's actually quite a nice quiet subtle noise from the locomotive it's not overpowering so you could imagine having a locomotive just simmering away on shed and it isn't going to drown out everything else that's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my finger out for the buffer and then uh, let's get it going. <laughs> Went the wrong way. there now the locomotive is stationary there is a sound but it is actually quite nice and subtle so we've got the short whistle long whistle and that is uh, apparently playable but you will need to change on your controller from latching to momentary to be able to do that uh, unfortunately on the NCE power cab all of mine are set up as latching Number four is the security valves. It says, is that the safety valves? And you may find that that's an additional sound that it's worth playing at the same time as the locomotive is running. So we'll just turn that off. And it doesn't just go off. It plays for a little while and then it fades out. So F5, the vacuum pump. But then, of course, because some of the class did also get Westinghouse air pumps, we can uh, get the different sound of that from F6. And then F7 is the coupling noise. And then F8. And uh, it has to be said as well, actually, and I will show you in a cutaway that the firebox flicker from this decoder 
is particularly pleasing. It's got the perfect random flickering um, and that is always a consideration uh, with the locomotives that do have the firebox glow. Does it have a good firebox glow? And on this one, definitely. So we're just going to turn that off. And that's the firebox glow plus the door sound. We've now got the guard's whistle. F10 is the injector. And that plays through a sequence, um, really quite nice that. And then we've got the clickety clack sound on F11. Nothing is happening until the locomotive moves, I'm guessing, so. Not helped a little bit by the fact that I'm stalling it out. So um, let's see now, F12 is coal shoveling. F13 gives us the long whistle. And that is actually quite a nice um, uh, setup on that. F14 is water refill. F15 cleaning floor. And then we've got uh, braking sound and forced coasting on F16 and F17. So um, these are ones I'm going to have to set up whilst it's running. So we're going to try F17 and just see how this works. Again, I've just got to stall the locomotive. So that's without the forced coasting. And now uh, headlight and seven. And you can hear that subtle, almost like a wheezing. The steam's been cut off and the locomotive is just coasting. Let's turn that off. And that works really, really nicely and well. And then we've got volume on F19 and F20. And there you have it, the uh, full sound file on the decoder. The Doula and the Hass sound decoders vary between approximately 75 and 85 euros from the Tramfabrique website. In addition to this, you'll need to purchase the speaker, and these range from around 6 euros 50 cents up to just over 8 euros. You can also browse their website for a wide variety of sound profiles. The full package as seen and heard in this locomotive from Tramfabrique works out at a little under £85, which makes it a really cost-effective option for sound fitting your locomotive. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And we do have a link in the description box down below to take you to Tramfabrique to browse their range of Dula and Haas and sound decoders and some of the sound profiles that they've got available to marry up with your locomotive sound fitting projects. Also, don't forget whilst you're there that if you're a user of Trainomatic decoders, then they do sell a range of Suzy sound modules, which are a zero waste upgrade for your Trainomatic decoder fitted locomotives to bring a sound option to that decoder at a really cost effective price. Please also check us out over on Patreon to help us keep making the videos that you want to see. And also check out the merch store and see what t-shirts we've got for you. We've got a few new ones going up there as well. So if you do like the Billy's replacement speakers, then we're sure to have something for you. And please tickle that like button. Sharing is caring and subscribe to the channel to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. Until next time, happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you.
I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.